Hello! Ah, uh, time for a real proper retro thingamajig today, as we cast our minds back ooh, somewhere between 20 and 30 years, terrifyingly, to how we used to control our video games back in the UK, back in the day. For starters, it occurs to me, we used to call them computer games, as a general rule, because we would generally have one of the 8-bit computers moving on to one of the 16-bit computers. The early consoles, like the you know NES and Sega Master System, did exist over here. Didn't sell in huge numbers, I don't think. Um, certainly, I never saw one growing up of either. Uh, reason being, far too expensive. You couldn't convince your dad to shell out a fortune for you know the latest Sega box and then have to buy expensive games on cartridges when you could just have a Commodore 64 and a high-speed twin tape deck and uh, copy the games off your mates in the playground. Also, of course, we had had the cheap home computing revolution a few years before with the ZX Spectrum and that, so all that was going on and quite ingrained in the culture. Now, I remember when we used to play our games and control them by using what is quite literally a variable resistor on a stick. Come to think of it, I can remember when uh, variable resistors were called rheostats, but let's not get into that. Now when you control a video game these days, you grab hold of something with about 12 analogue sticks and 497 buttons and a D-pad and all this kind of exciting stuff. But back in the 80s, your joypad consisted of a single D-pad. Eight cardinal directions, a couple of buttons to mash, maybe in a select and a start if you were really lucky, and that was your lot. But no, not for our home computers in the 80s, we had a far simpler thing. And they were never joypads, they were always joysticks. Don't know why, um, I can only presume it's a hark back to the arcade games of the time, you know, had a stick and some buttons and there you go. Except of course they were condensed for the home market, because you didn't really want something that big in front of your computer. Be expensive for starters. So you often ended up with something that looked like you should be controlling a spaceship or some sort of fighter jet with it, as you will see shortly. But before I show them to you, there's a couple of things you need to know. The first is that nearly all of these devices look like they should be analogue, but none of them are. It is literally just eight digital directions, and that's your lot. Doesn't matter how far you move the joystick, the little man on the screen will never run any faster. It's just not in the wiring. And the other thing is, there's only one fire button. There's only one button on the controller. That is it. There's no select, there's no start, there's no more than one button ever. And it doesn't matter how many physical buttons are present on the joystick. You might have one on a trigger, one on the top, one on the base, another one here. It doesn't matter. Whichever one you press, they all do the same thing. There is only one button, and that's your lot. Actually, let me show you one of the connectors. This was such a standard for years, you wouldn't believe. It's actually pretty much identical to the ones used by the Sega Master System and the Mega Drive, except, of course, they had more buttons. So plugging one of these into it, it might work, for all I know, but um, I imagine it's got a slightly different pinout, and it would be pointless because you couldn't play any of the games because you've only got one button. Did I say that enough yet? Um, this is actually exactly the same pinout, I believe, as the old Atari 2600, which is where I think this standard came from. And my god, did it last. I mean, you've got built-in ports for this. Um, you had them on the Acorn Electron, I believe. BBC Micro, Commodore 64, of course, the Amstrad CPC. ZX Spectrum didn't have built-in um, joystick ports, but you could plug in an interface in the back, which you could then plug a couple of these into. Although later Spectrum, thinking about it, did have ports that looked identical to these, but were wired up differently. That's something we'll come on to later. And even the 16-bit computers, the Amiga, Atari ST, had them all built in, so you could buy one of these joysticks and use it almost forever. Well, let's stop wittering on and actually look at one of the damn things, shall we? And already, a small proportion of the audience has gone, oh god, I remember those. Welcome to the Amstrad JY2. Mm -mm. It's a method for controlling video games. That much you've probably worked out. What you may not have worked out is it's bloody small. I never realised how small these were. I didn't use one back in the day. You'd have to have the tiny hands of a chimp in order to actually get your thumb round it to be able to press that button on the top. Now, these were bloody cheap things that Amstrad gave away. This one's actually in quite good condition. You can sort of still feel the contacts going there. Actually, that's something we should explain. Cheaper joysticks had contacts, more expensive joysticks had micro switches. Contacts work as exactly you would expect. Push the joystick, it pushes down a bit of metal, it touches another bit of metal, therefore creating an electrical circuit. Wow, rocket science. The downside, of course, of this is, um, well, they don't last very bloody long, they don't feel very definite, it all feels a bit cheap, in fact. And, as I say, longevity is not on the cards as a general rule, but they were a lot cheaper than micro-switches, which, of course, were used in arcade joysticks. Look! It's a joystick I pulled out of an arcade machine the other day and haven't cleaned. Oh, it's absolutely horrible. It's probably all congealed 
oh, I dread to think, sweat and tea or something horrible like that. But as you can see, push the joystick, push these little nubs which go in, and push the micro switch. And that's a far nicer system. It feels more definite, but more importantly, lasts a lot longer as well. Um, obviously it'd have to if it's the sort of thing used in a bloody arcade machine. How do you tell if a joystick has contacts or microswitches? Move it, and if it goes click it's microswitches. There, we've all learnt something today. Anyway, this thing's pretty nasty as you can probably guess. It was a freebie one given away. The only thing of interest with it, as a general rule, it's got a second port on it, because the Amstrad only physically had one joystick port. So if you wanted a second joystick, you could use this to daisy chain it along. Hey. But unfortunately it did mean somebody had to play using this, and it would probably break after a very short period of time. Which brings me rather perfectly into the next joystick for... Oh man, right, this is technically the first joystick I ever owned. Not this exact one, that's the one I had died within weeks, because they all bloody did. I present for your delectation the Sinclair SJS-1. <clears throat> made by Amstrad, for Amstrad had bought Sinclair out at that stage. Oh my goodness, I believe this has the same guts as the JY2, just in a different case. Um, it's larger and more comfortable. Only got the one button, so I hope you like pushing things with your thumb. And look how broken that is. It's probably only been used twice. These things were absolute crap. They didn't feel good in the first place, and they just did not last full stop. The only good thing is, once they're broken, you can do this with them. Why is that good? Because it enables you to cheat at games where you make a little man run. Something like Daily Thompson's Decathlon or uh, Hypersports Track and Field, that kind of stuff. You had to waggle your joystick left and right as fast as you could to get the man to run. I can only presume that was a devious feature put in by joystick manufacturers. That's going to break anything after a short period of time, isn't it? But you could cheat on them if you had a loose one like this by going... And it would make Daily Thompson run inhumanly fast. Except I imagine this one is now actually so broken that it probably doesn't even register left and right. As I say, mine actually went like this within a couple of weeks of bloody owning it. All you had to do was use it a couple of times and it died. Look, this is grey, not black. That's relevant, because going back to what I said earlier about the uh, slightly different joystick ports built into the older Spectrums, when Amstrad started to make the ZX Spectrums, they put joystick ports on them but used the old Sinclair type, which is weird. It's wired up differently to the other standards, so whilst you could plug another joystick in, it wouldn't bloody work unless you had a specific Sinclair one, which did limit your options somewhat. Fortunately, a lot of people later on, actually when they made joysticks, would have an adapter coming off the wire for Sinclair, which made things a lot easier. I always had to buy that, having a ZX Spectrum Plus 2 myself. It's a weird setup. I don't know why they didn't just go with the Kempston standard, which was just, um, well, I could just work that out, actually. They'd probably have had to pay money to Mr Kempston, wouldn't they? This was a weird thing. It maps um, the movements onto the number keys. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, and zero, if I remember. Or is it six, seven, eight, nine, and zero? That would make more sense. Who cares? Let's look at another joystick. I'm getting confused in old man memories. Speaking of which, here's a quick shot too. Man, this is evocative of an era. The early 80s, you almost certainly had a Spectra video quick shot too. Why? Because they were cheap and they kind of worked. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, looks very much like something the last Starfighter would be using to shoot down the evil aliens. And it's got an auto fire on the back. Bang, 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 bang. No bangs. There we are. Scientific explanation for you. You also notice a lot of these have suction cups on the bottom so you can stick them onto your desk and play one-handed. Although we would generally remove the suction cups and then hold it in one hand like that because I didn't have a desk in front of my computer, therefore making it difficult to stick things to it. But yeah, the Quick Shot 2 was a really popular joystick. It was one of the first decent ones at a decent price. And they, to be honest, they weren't really very good. It was just a fact that's all we could afford and it's all there was at the time. I had a red version of this called a Quick Shot 2 Turbo, which had a slightly chunkier base in red, as I've already said. And the thing about them was, had micro switches rather than contacts. So it was a much nicer thing to use and actually lasted me for about a year or so, if I recall, which was a long time for joysticks back in the day. Anyway, after that came along a cheaper one. Welcome to the Cheetah 125 Plus. Look, 
There's what we were talking about with the twin connectors. <gasps> Exciting. Also, four buttons, and as we previously said, all of them do the same bloody thing. I had one of these for quite some time because they were very cheap and actually work quite well. They tend to last considerably longer than the Quick Shot 2s, and they're not a bad thing to use. And there's not that much travel on them, you know, it feels definite. The only thing is, there's a switch on there for the auto fire, and it always fell off. I've actually got three of these knocking around, and none of them have the um, plastic switch on there anymore. I mean, it still works, but it's the principle of the thing, damn it. But the good old 125 Plus, it did keep us in gaming for some considerable amount of time. Now, Quickshot were not a company to rest on their laurels. They released a lot of joysticks, all with a number afterwards, like Quickshot 7 and all that kind of excitement. And some of them were really bloody weird. Here's one that's slightly odd. The bottom of it is very similar to a Quickshot 1, the very first one they produced. Um, this is the Quickshot 4. Sportsman, it says on it. Not sportsman, sportsmen, which is slightly odd. Anyway, it's got a big rubber thing that feels all right in the hand. Tiny little button on the top. Hey, look, I'm playing games on what is obviously a very cheap and old joystick bottom just with a lump of rubber on it. But wait. Yep, pointless interchangeability. Now I'm piloting a spacecraft or something, and I can grip it slightly harder. Marvellous. Wow. You know the third one's going to be stupid, don't you? I'm going to tell you what, you're not wrong. If I can get this on, there we are. That apparently is for controlling racing games. What does it say on it? Racer. There we are, that makes sense. Why would you control a car purely using the gear stick? And you can't even access the bloody um, button on the top, so you're stuck with that one. That makes no sense to me at all after all these years. It was just like, well, we've got one that's like a pistol grip, and we've got one that's a bit less like a pistol grip. What else do we do? I don't know, stick a gear stick on it. That would be different, wouldn't it? Ah, marvellous. Well, at least it feels good in the hand. Unlike, for instance, these horrible licensed joysticks I'm about to show you. Good old licensing, it means companies are more interested in promoting whatever brand they've paid a fortune to use than actually giving you something usable. And Cheetah were buggers for that. They released a range of joysticks called Characteristic. <laughs> I still wish them dead after all these years. And they tied them in with famous things like Terminator 2 Judgment Day. You are not going to believe the joystick here. Well, you might do, actually, because they actually released versions of these with wires on them for the NES. So maybe you've seen them from that. If not, Enjoy the Terminator 2 Judgment Day stick, which it's taken me years of uh, professional therapy to not laugh my fucking head off whenever I see this thing. I mean, could they have made it any cheaper and shiter? It's got one of their most basic early joystick bottoms, nasty cheap contacts, and do we really need to even talk about the head? Look at the eyes. Little red piggy eyes. Look at the moulding line down the middle. It's like Skeletor's crap robot. Also, an extra button on the forehead, because of course, you've got to hold it like this. I've got big hands, but man, this is still really freaking uncomfortable. Why would you hold this stupid lump of plastic in your hand whilst playing? It just makes no sense at all. Maybe it was something for the collector's market. Collector be apparently being a euphemism for idiots, because these were really bloody expensive. But hey, they looked cool in the magazine adverts. So low quality, it's unbelievable. I mean, look, I've literally only taken this out of the box for the first time, like 30 minutes ago, and already the sticker's coming away. Terrible. Also, it looks like this. Anyway, how about something a little more ergonomic with Alien 3 joystick? Look, there's the Alien from Alien 3. This is going to be good, isn't it? Oh my goodness. And I must admit, I am cheating slightly here. This is actually the NES version, because I couldn't come across the uh, standard ones. But yeah, there's like an alien with its arms down by its side. It looks like it's been handcuffed to itself. And the bottom is exactly the same as the Cheetah 125 Plus. Except look, because it's new, it's still got the little bit over the autofire. It's a miracle. And it's just got a select and start button stuck on it, because of course this is the NES version. Ignore that, because that wouldn't have been on the one I'm actually talking about. Well, <clears throat> I'm sure this is exactly what H.R. Geiger had in mind when he uh, designed the alien. Look, there's a trigger in its throat. Crikey O'Reilly. Um, yeah, well, it's more obviously hand-shaped than the other one, but it's still massively uncomfortable and also cuts into your hand on all these many spiky bits they've carved into it. If you were to actually use this to play games, you'd probably end up with a bloodied stump on the end of your arm after a short period. Absolutely ludicrous. 
And do you know what? It wasn't even the most uncomfortable one they made. There was a third characteristic produced, again using the 125 plus bottom, I believe, but in a funny blue colour. It was Bart Simpson! And I'm editing in a photograph because I couldn't actually get hold of one of those because they're very expensive. Also, I don't really want it in the house. But yeah, just imagine that thing cutting into your hand while you're trying to play a game. Absolute freaking madness. Anyway, let's move away from the standard stick design for a while. Koenig, Speed King, anybody? Yes, um, Koenig came up with the idea that maybe, just maybe, people would want to hold something in their hand, so why not make it so it fits into their hand? And they can hold the buttons and move the stick, and hey, look, none of this um, crappy flight joystick stuff. Something properly made to play games with, not aping anything. Oh god, it's terrible. So terrible I can barely tell you. Um, again, you've got to have tiny hands in order to be able to grip it and use it properly. I'm sort of stuck in this weird position like this, or it slips out of my hand. And wait for it, this is what happens when you move the joystick. There's that much travel on it. That's insane. I mean, you're only going to go like that because it's either left or right, up or down, or nothing. It does... I mean, it's obviously an analogue stick they've just repurposed for a digital, and it's absolutely mind-bogglingly awful. Also, there's something really crap and very unrelaxed about holding something in your hand and then having to kind of hold the top of it and... Eh. Yeah, I'm moving up now. I don't know, it's just something... Uh, it, it, how can you relax when you're kind of hunched over this horrifying thing? But don't worry, there's a new... God, sorry, I'd forgotten about this. <laughs> Turn off centre return. And it doesn't even go back to the bloody middle once you've finished moving it anymore, so you can't really tell whether you're moving up, down, left or right or what. Absolute genius. Um, that was a problem with this anyway, to be brutally honest. You couldn't really tell if you were going directly up or down, because there's so much travel on it, you had to kind of keep an eye. These things were awful. Awful, 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 and useless for left-handed people. Actually, that's a lie. They did make left-handed um, ones of these in small numbers, I believe. But it's absolutely terrible. So Koenig's had another go! Set phases to butt plug with the Konix Navigator. Well, it's a lot more ergodynamic. You can actually... Ergodynamic? What? That was a strange mixture of ergonomic and aerodynamic there. I meant ergonomic, I think. Um, you can actually hold it in your hand and pull the trigger, and it's all nice. And look, doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed. All exactly the same. And then you have to control it with... Yeah, I don't want to know where that's been. Just listen to that. It sounds more industrial than a printing press. Um, well, it's got micro-switches, which is nice, and makes more sense than the horrible quasi-analog thing of the last one. But there's too much travel on it, and it oh, it just feels awful. And again, you're not really definite of which direction you're moving it in. So, these were completely given up on, these handheld things, as a bad job. Nope, I'm lying, actually, because Cheetah the manufacturer that we've seen several things from today, decided to stop making crappy Terminator heads, and instead produced the only handheld one worth actually using, the bug. A tiny little thing, you slip into your hand like that. Button's there, so again, doesn't matter if you're left or right-handed, it's going to feel the same. And you control it using this. Again, this is something I couldn't personally get on with. Um, there's still too much travel on this thing, and I just don't like the whole sort of strange nerdy control thing it's got going on. But some people absolutely swear by these. Well, swore by them. I doubt they've used them in the last decade or so, to be brutally honest with you. Plus, it's got an autofire that's a big lump. Ah, happy days. But yeah, I mean, whilst I'm not keen on this, I could actually use it to control games quite happily, unlike the other two, which were just evil. And hey, I could plug it straight into my Spectrum, so everybody's happy. Here's something a little bit different. It's all wrapped up in other wires. That's handy. Plump. Oh yeah. The Quick Shot... Oh. Doesn't say. I think it was called a Quick Shot Maverick. Can't remember, actually. Now, most people dislike these. I quite like them. Very reminiscent of an old arcade joystick in both look and... Well, I say and feel. It's noticeably cheaper feeling than a proper arcade joystick, but still does the job. And it's got two buttons, and wait for it, by switching this little thing across, you can actually turn it onto Sega mode. And then the two buttons did things differently, so you could use it with a um, Master System. Amazing! I didn't have one of those, so uh, I just used it to play the standard one-button games. This has a really insane feature, which I've never got my head round. Player one, player two. The reason it says that is... My god, these leads are long. They're insanely long, actually. It has two joystick leads, so you can plug it into both 
joystick ports, and then switch between player one and player two. So if you were Billy No Mates, you could pretend you were playing a two-player game. This is kind of like the first ever iteration of uh, Forever Alone in video games. Very, very strange. But hey, I like the clicky feel of it, so it keeps me happy. Now enough of looking at the not that great control methods, and on to the real classics. These, I believe, are the three most popular and arguably, well, in fact, almost definitively the best controllers of the time. And they all look very similar, you'll notice. This is the Competition Pro. To make you feel like you're a professional in a competition, do you see how that works? Don't know why most of them are clear, I never like this crystal stuff, I don't really want to see what's going on inside, as you see all the plastic wearing away. Look, it's formed a sort of horrible pink soup. But anyway, hold it in either hand. Really, really excellent micro-switched feel to it. Um, one of the nicest joysticks to use, also one of the most effective, hardly any travel. Um, you can be very precise with it, you know which direction you're pushing it, it's really quite a lovely thing. But for me, not quite as good as the Power Play Cruiser. Yes, it's that colour. There's a story behind this. Originally they were just black, and I think they did another couple of colours as well. Then they all just kind of all disappeared from the shops and only left this ludicrous Fisher Price thing, which is horribly ugly. But it's such a good joystick, we bought it anyway. This is actually my old joystick from the time. Clicky clicky buttons. Move around the shaft, similar to the other one. I just like it. I think the reason I like this more than that, actually, is because the buttons are a bit further out from the joystick, and having large hands, that makes it slightly more comfortable for me. Plus, it had the Sinclair thing on it, so I could plug it straight into my computer. Plus, there's no auto-fire. Oh, that's a little bit depressing. However, they make up for it with the magic collar. I am not making that up. This is set on two, which is the standard control for it. But lift it up, move the collar along, you get a lot more resistance. You now have to really wrench it to move in the directions. I don't know anybody who ever played like that. But also, move it down to one, and it becomes very loose. And you can do tiny little movements like that. Some of my friends preferred that. I was more of a middle-of-the-road man, because I like to wrench it around a little bit and get a bit too excited about what I'm playing. But that wasn't the best. The best was the zip stick. It looks like some kind of non-crap-coloured version of the others but it's slightly more comfortable to hold and works the best out of all of them. This isn't a particularly good example. I think one of the uh, switches is bust at the top on this one, but the fact remains, this was arguably the greatest controller of the eight, late 8 bit and 16 bit era. It just feels bloody excellent. Oh. In fact, I'm going to probably play some... Oh, I was going to say probably play something with that later, but I think the up one is broken. Oh. Hang on, I've got my old one upstairs. Fuck it, I've got one that works. Hooray! There we are. Let's end on a high note, except we're not ending yet. Because whilst spending about £143 million on old controllers, I did come across some weird ones in a bulk box I bought that I don't actually recognise. Let me shove them in front of your faces. First up, the Fantastic, fa Fantastic, Fantastic F3. Oh God, I hate them already. Strange angular design. I would guess this is a fairly early joystick, in fact. Um, well, they've got patent pending. How did that go, lads? Did you ever get your patent, or did you go bust before they even had time to send the form back, as I would hazard actually happened? Yeah, well, you stick your hand around it, it's got a button on the top, cheapy contacts, but it's almost completely unusable. It's the most ridiculously spongy control I've ever felt in my life. If you want to go left, you have to go oh, really far over, suddenly go right, oh. and it, it kind of has this weird resistance against you, like you're moving it through a swamp. It's a really horrible piece of crap, but I've never heard of it before, and hopefully I never will again. This one really, really confused me. This is apparently a Gravis Mark VI. Now, I had to write that down because it's not written on the joystick. Again, um, sort of... Is it micro-switched? Well, I, I can't really tell. It's got a really weird feel to it. The buttons are certainly micro so those ones are. Top one isn't, that's a contact, that's a bit odd. Um, the shaft is sort of a very soft rubber, so you can grip it quite tightly and uh, it doesn't move, but it's very, very thin, so it doesn't kind of feel properly in your hand. And it's got a really horrible feel as you move it around. You, there's quite a lot of travel on it, more than you would want to actually control something carefully. But wait for it, there's this bloody great disc in the middle. Spin it round, and you can adjust how much travel it has from too much too comically too much, and you now have to... I mean, look at that! It's like some sort of flight yoke or something. What the bloody hell were they thinking? 
Also, the auto fire switches on the side are really weird. They're like dials that you have to kind of flick down. And yes, there are three, because there are three buttons. There's another one on the top. That confused me at first. But well, that's a very odd thing. Um, oh, look, it's still got the serial number. I wonder if it's still under warranty. <laughs> I very much doubt that somehow. And this thing, never even heard of the company that made it. QJ quality joystick. This is called a Superstar. And it's really nice, actually. Um, it feels like a proper arcade joystick. A um, little bit too much travel, again, that does seem to be a feature of these sort of uh, cheaper ones. But it's got a really solid feel to it. Buttons are alright. Yeah, I mean, I could have used, quite happily used that back in the day, I think. The problem is, though, why is the stick on the right? Um, arcade sticks were always on the left. Very strange. Don't understand the uh, thinking behind that. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Except we weren't beggars, we were probably paying a bloody fortune for that, because it's something quite rare I've never heard of, and it seems to have high quality parts. Oh well, that's the end of joysticks then. But I've got just a little something extra to show you. Our friends at Quickshot produced the Quickshot 7. Their attempt at a joypad. Oh yes, the future is here. Tell me who spotted the problem. How the hell do you hold a joypad when it's got the fucking lead going into your hand? So, uh, what? Absolutely mental. Or so you'd think, because Quickshot hadn't even worked out how you hold a joypad. This is up on it. You have to hold it in one hand like this, so you've got the buttons there, and then with the thumb of the other hand, try and manoeuvre it, and it's almost completely useless. I mean, as you can see, it doesn't have any sort of di um, definite directions on it at all. It does feel entirely like some weird analogue stick, so you can't really tell if you're going up or diagonally or what until you move it quite a way down, and you've got almost no control of the game. I've, this is almost certainly one of the worst things I've ever used to try and control a game. It's absolutely insane. It's like Quickshot didn't even test it. It was just, oh god, we need to release something different. How about something that looks like a joypad but is useless? Can we make it cheap? Yes, we can. Brilliant. Off we go. They produced one of them, I can't remember the number of it, that was like one of their standard joysticks like this, but had a gigantic shelf in front of it with like a huge fire button, like a pedal or something. So you could sort of manoeuvre it around like that and slap this giant button. Oh, actually I'll splice in a photo of that if I can find one, because it was a bizarre thing. It looks like you could actually fire with your foot if you could bend your leg up high enough. Anyway, that's the end of all that. So remember, when you're complaining and saying, Ooh, I really don't like the PS3 controller. Ooh, ooh, I tell you what I hate. I hate that 360 control pad. Ooh, keyboard and mouse. Just think of this, and praise Thor, Zeus, Neptune, and any other gods you can imagine that you're not having to play bloody Dark Souls on something that looks and feels like you've just grabbed an aborted robot's brain. It's another bit after the credit sting. Yes, more. There's a reason for this. I would really like to mention to you what are probably the two most obviously stupid joysticks ever made. In fact, one not even a joystick. I don't know what the hell it is. Couldn't get hold of either of these, mainly because they are so stupid that nobody ever bought them. And as a result, they're as rare as hen's teeth. Right, here's the first one. The Robtech Terminator. Not to be confused with the Powerplay Terminator, which was a perfectly normal joystick. This, as you can see, is a hand grenade. That's it. You hold the hand grenade in your hand, and moving the crappy little metal stick poking out at the top, you make whatever's happening on screen do the opposite of what you want, probably. And if that wasn't bad enough, which it is, have a look at the Cheetah Tortoise. Yes, it looks like a bloody tortoise. Yes, this actually was released to market. Yes, it's got three buttons that are all the same. Yes, it is a bloody tortoise. And it doesn't even have a joystick or anything. You have to put your hand on the top of it and then kind of push it forwards and backwards in order to make movements, like some sort of weird mouse designed by a maniac. Anyway, if you happen to have either one of those in your uh, loft, please do send them to my P.O. box, because I would love to try and use them. Oh wait, I'm lying.